Hi, welcome to Astro Journey UK. In today's video, I'm going to be using a set of processes that I've set up and shared with you in PixInsight to be able to process this image of the Heart Nebula. So if you're new to PixInsight and you're not really too sure what to do and how to uh, process one-shot colour images, then uh, keep watching. So the purpose of this video is for me to just run through my workflow from a one-shot colour camera perspective in PixInsight. And to do that, what I've produced is a set of process icons that you can download from the link in the description. You can follow along with processing the same image and you can understand how I do things, why I do things that particular way, and you can understand how I process images and get the colour that I get from my images. So first things first, we need to open the process icons. So you can do this in a number of ways. You can double click on it. You could right click in here and open or load process icons. Uh, for simplicity, I'm just going to double click on this. The way that the flow would work is you start from top left, uh, work your way down over to the right hand column, and then uh, the final process will be the merge stylus and stars at the end. First things first, what we need to do is open our image. So I'm just going to drag that into PixInsight here. So this is an image of the uh, the Heart Nebula, one and a half hours of integration time, which isn't an awful lot. It's taken with the Red Cat 51 telescope and the ASI 183 MC Pro one-shot color camera. We'll just do an auto stretch here so you can see a sea of green. First things first is to uh, do a dynamic crop of this particular view. Double click on dynamic crop and we're just going to just crop the edges. And the reason for cropping the edges is because there's because of I was using dithering, uh, there's elements of the edge of the frame doesn't actually contain uh, as much data as the middle, and so therefore you'll get an increased amount of noise around the edges. So we just select that, hit the green tick, and away we go, and that's crop done. Uh, keyboard shortcuts that I use, um, I'm on Mac, so it's a uh, command and zero to make a, a large window, command and T to make a smaller window. Uh, if you're on Windows, replace command with control. The next step is photometric color calibration. So this is a, a nice, easy to use tool as long as you have location details within the image itself. I'm just gonna do a demonstration here um, to show you that what it looks like when it's not working. So the way that I stack this was with uh, Deep Sky Stacker hence producing a, a, a fits file, a .fts file, and that doesn't uh, provide me with uh, the, the location information of the night sky. And you can see here it says uh, the image has no valid astrometric solution. So to uh, plate solve this image, we need to go up to script, down to image analysis, and onto image plate solver. So you need to fill some information out to help the plate solver. The first thing that you need to do is actually specify the target. So we're just going to type Heart Nebula. You could also type uh, IC1804. Uh, both both ways work. So select that, hit OK. And we need the uh, the date and time, um, roughly, of when the image was uh, taken. So I took this from the uh, the date modified on the file. Uh, just did approximately well, 2021, uh, 23rd of November, around about eight o'clock. Next uh, important information here is around the uh, focal length of the telescope and then the re resolution um, in uh, arc seconds per pixel. But um, yeah, it, it's getting that from the, uh, the stacked image, so that's already been pre-populated. And then the camera information is, um, because it's the ASI 183MC Pro, it's uh, 2.4 micrometers. So just hit OK. What it then needs to do is go download the uh, the data let's get this out of the way so you can see what's going on there so you can see here in the process window um, it's uh, downloaded the the information about uh, that particular part of the night sky uh, done various calculations and then it's provided you with the uh, image bounds the top left top right uh, bottom left bottom right in right ascension and declination coordinates so that image is now plate solved so we can go back to uh, photometric color calibration uh, make sure that the uh, background neutralization is ticked. This will re help remove this uh, this green color cast from the one-shot color camera. And then the color calibration will make sure that the rest of the image is actually uh, accurate from a color representation perspective. So let's drag that process on there and just let that do its thing. So that's that finished. We'll just restretch this now and you will see that the 
image looks a lot better. The next step will be doing some background extraction. So for this particular image, I'm going to use uh, dynamic background extraction, and I'm going to use visible darks uh, method here because I tend to find it works pretty well and it's nice and quick as well. Set the tolerance to two, shadow re relaxation to six, down to sample generation. Set this to 150, click resize and generate. Um, and then what we're going to be doing is, is just only doing the sampling around the edges um, and not in the middle of the frame. So I'm going to delete these um, on a Mac. So I press the function and the backspace key uh, to delete anything in the middle. And once we've done this as well, I'm going to be deleting the boxes where there are there's nebulosity and we don't want to uh, sort of extract that as well so that's fine this is um, amp glow from my camera because even though I've taken calibration frames they don't seem to be uh, quite good enough to get rid of that amp glow on the uh, on the 183 which is a pity and then we go down to uh, target correction uh, select select subtraction drop these things because we don't need that and then we're going to drag this process here because we're going to use this um, again for uh, subtraction change it to division hit the tick and then once we've done that we're then going to open up the process again all of the points will be in the same place and then we've got subtraction hit the tick again and that will be background extraction complete so we got rid of a bit of the um, the amp glow there so it's kind of a lot better um, it's always better to get rid of that in actual calibration rather than trying to deal with it in post-processing it's always a bit of a nightmare there what i'm actually going to do is i don't like this orientation i actually want a bit more of a portrait orientation and i'm going to crop out a bit of the top anyway you could argue maybe this is a bit of a waste because i'm i'm losing all of this image but from a composition perspective this is what i'm after so we hit the tick there we've got our image command zero again and what I'm also going to do is just rotate this image around to where I want it. So go down to geometry, fast rotation, and we want to rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise. There we go, command zero again, and this is our image that we're going to be working with. Um, sometimes I use SCNR to remove the, the green from the image, but sometimes it, I find it knocks out the, uh, the color balance again, and then you have to recolor balance balance it but so given that I've been through photometric color calibration I'm, I'm happy with the, the way this looks at the moment next thing to do is uh, running blur exterminator set that to the defaults and just drag that onto uh, onto the image and this is essentially like a um, an AI based deconvolution process so you'll notice that the um, the stars will actually kind of shrink in terms of their um, bloatedness as, as a result of running this process and I yeah I love the uh, the effect of this particular tool if you don't have blur exterminator um, you can't afford it or, or whatever or you don't believe in it then um, yeah you can go through a deconvolution process in order to be able to uh, handle bloating of stars and things like that but I, I just love this just purely for ease of use maybe I'm a bit of a lazy um, processor I don't know but I tend to uh, like using tools, if they're going to make my life easier, then that's what I'm going to use. Uh, the next tool is uh, Noise Exterminator, again by RC Astro. I see a lot of people using these uh, this tool suite, but it's um, fantastic from the point of view of just uh, denoising an image really quickly. So let's just zoom in here quickly so you can kind of see the difference. So this is after, and this is before. So there's quite a significant difference in terms of noise at zoom and even more so hopefully you can see that so this is before and that's after so uh, a fantastic tool nice and quick you can do it all natively in PixInsight as well but it can be quite slow you can also use the easy processing suite and easy denoise as well that works really well but that is a slow process um, the next thing is from a stretching perspective uh, I am going to use the easy processing suite there but uh, 
I've got these these two things here just just from the point of view of, of reminding me whilst going through this process that that's what I'm doing next is I've uh, done blur exterminator I've denoised it and now I need to stretch the image you can stretch the image by uh, the brute force approach is is hit the hit the nuke button select your view drag the triangle onto the histogram transformation um, and then apply that that works very well as a as an approach as well but um, I prefer to stretch it more gently you can also kind of stretch it manually yourself as well by um, by sort of pulling these sliders across and, and get this histogram around about that first quarter area you have to do a number of iterations there uh, there's, there's two different options there but um, again I'm just going to run through using Easy Processing Suite which is actually a free tool so um, yeah definitely worth downloading uh, I'll just jump back actually and show you where you can get that from so if you go into resources, updates, manage repositories you need to add this URL into your manage update repositories so you just click add enter that URL into this box click OK click OK again it will go away update update the repository and then you'll have to restart uh, PixInsight so easy processing suite easy soft stretch nice and quick so you can play about with these as well so you can sort of tweak the uh, the target median if you want a slightly darker image and you can see the histogram changing here I'm going to go for back where it, where it was uh, so you can at least you've got this preview as well so you can see what the stretch is doing when you're ready just hit that button and stretch is done so the next step in this process is to what you want to do with any imaging is actually remove the stars and process the nebula behind those stars so uh, again another RC Astro tool um, make sure that unscreened stars is is ticked because we're going to be um, putting those stars back in if you don't do unscreen then you can end up with some funny star colors and things so um, just yeah make sure whenever you use it if you're going to be removing the stars to then put them back in again and make sure you use that as an approach so that's the, uh, the stars removed you can just drop this down now and put that to one side and we've got our nebula that we want to uh, start playing about with so uh, we have got a number of options here you can either start sort of diving into uh, curves transformation um, and you can start playing about with with the curves uh, brighten up the highlights typical S curve stuff to uh, to pull things down I think because this this image is um, only uh, one and a half hours of integration time there's there's some areas around the edges which look a bit messy so what I'm going to do is create a nebula mask and you can see that I've called this it's actually the range selection tool but I've called it nebula masking because that's what I use it for so if we reset that hit the circle for preview and then what we want to do is drag this lower limit up until we can see um, a bulk of the area that we want to manipulate we then want to um, add a level of smoothing to it so we don't get any nasty artifacts from uh, sort of isolating particular parts of the image and, and sort of boosting the curves and things like that and not other parts and then you'll get some hard lines so make sure you use the smoothness a bit and we're going to change the fuzziness as well a bit so what I'm looking for here is is the area where I kind of want to darken that background and just keep the nebula but it's a trade-off around getting all of the faint detail around the nebula as well so if you can see here yeah there's some light areas here which I don't want I find them a bit distracting so I'm trying to use this lower limit to remove that each time you go through this process you'll end up with <laughs> with a different a different range mask each time so here's hoping that this one works so hit the square to uh, create that range mask and then close the preview and then we've got our range mask here we then drag that underneath the image and that's you can see everything red is protected and wouldn't be changed and everything that's not red isn't protected uh, what we want to do is just invert that mask because I want to just darken this background a little bit so 
So keep that to one side just in case we want to try and do it again. And we open Curves Transformation, Circle for Preview, and then we can start playing about with the RGB curve here. So you can see, sort of just pulling down this, this curve, you can see that the area that um, is protected is completely unaffected from that. And interestingly, I guess, yeah, there's some nebulosity in here, but there's there's an element of it, it could be quite nice to have some darker patches in. It's all, I'd say, subjective. I'm not a scientist. I'm not doing this for uh, for complete accuracy. This is just a, a demonstration of what you can do. So let's go with that and apply that. and you can see it's previewed it again and that, that doesn't look very nice at all. So we then switch the mask round, so we'll invert it back, open up the preview again and now we can start applying some some changes to the heart nebula itself, just boosting a bit of contrast in it, bringing out some of the details a bit more. When you're using curves just keep an eye on um, the values of RGB down here so you can just on the preview left mouse click on the on the bright areas just making sure you're not blowing out any uh, any detail there it's very easy to uh, to overcook things that, that then means that you've blown out and you've lost detail in the bright areas Apply that. Quite often in doing this iteratively, you can find that you apply something and then it will apply the S curve again. And you actually go, well, actually, I prefer the second one. Or you can say, oh no, that's too much. I need to stop. Um, so I'm going to apply this second one again. You'll notice as well when you're applying the S curve, you're actually sort of effectively boosting the saturation due to uh, enhancing the contrast as well. So uh, let's go with that. What I might just try again quickly is just invert the mask again and drop this down to see if I can just get rid of that mottled effect that I've got. So that's just reduced it a bit more. I can turn the preview on and off and you can see the effect there as well. I'm struggling to think whether I actually prefer that or not. I'm going to make that change. That will be the last one from a curves perspective. Close that down. Remove the mask. So uh, next thing you can this is always down to experimentation as well. So I've got uh, the HDR multi-scale transform here. I tend to just run this just to see whether it makes any difference, whether it enhances the image or not. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And yeah, as with a lot of these things, it's always worth experimenting. There's an element that I like this, but it feels like it might be a bit too much. Let's just see. We bring curves up again and just So I think in hindsight, I think I do like. I, I think the bit that I like is the um, is the core of the heart nebula. Um, just in terms of how that that's had an effect. Um, still quite tricky to to know quite how to 
move these to get what I'm actually after, but let's go with that. So uh, apply, use a square to apply it. Yep, yeah, second time around definitely too much. Uh, so we can close that. And another uh, thing to uh, try is uh, local histogram equalization. And so we open the preview here. Always, when you first open this, it always just feels way too much. Sometimes I just find that this gives it a bit more, brings out some of the details, but it's it it is it feels like it's really easy to overcook. So you can at least turn the preview on and off to see how much it really changes and how much it really enhances the image. I'm going to go with that, I think. So it's all about experimentation, playing with the sliders until you get something that you actually like the look of. Let's close that down. Um, another thing that's always worth taking a look at and, and bearing in mind will be under scripts, utilities, you've got dark structure enhance. Um, typically you just accept the defaults and hit OK. Uh, this, this can help sort of bring some additional contrast out of the, the dark and the light areas. Um, this Nebula, I don't think it necessarily lends itself to this, but again, it's always worth trying these things just to see see how things look. So that's after, and that's before. Pretty much very little difference, so I'm not going to bother with that. Let's just minimise this as well and get that out of the way. The other things that I've got down here, so I've got some masks um, provided by uh, Bill Blanchon, uh, so I've put those those there for convenience. The way that you tend to just use them, um, you can open them up or actually you can just drag the whole process onto the image, which will then create a mask of that particular um, color range. And you can use those to then sort of boost particular, particular areas. Uh, I'm not going to do that for this particular image, but sometimes it's useful to just um, use that, certainly if you're doing... Um, HSO type images, um, then it's worth looking at that. Uh, we've also got Bill Blanchon's sort of pseudo SHO normalization scripts as well. So you can do things like yeah, drag the HOO normalization on here and it will create a, a, a fake SHO image and you can start to play about with things there. But again, I think there's it's, it's not going to work for this particular image, but Again, I've put these here because they're they're nice, convenient things as part of the workflow to 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 use that as well. The final stage, I would say, is is to now combine these images. Um, you can also try these uh, star reduction methods. These are taken from uh, Luca Matico's channel as well. Um, well worth looking at that and and experimenting with it. I think the the stars are actually already quite nicely reduced as a result of using Blur Exterminator. If you don't have that and you want to try these, then just experiment by dragging them onto the image and, and seeing how much of a, an effect that actually has. So just for a convenience as well, um, I've created uh, some creator starless image and a star image, and it's purely so that you can just drag these onto those images and then just uh, execute that to create your final image. So. Uh, create that on or drag that onto this image and all it's doing is creating another image um, identical image but just called starless do the same with the stars and it just means that this this merging pix, pixel math script is is going to work nicely just want to uh, just quickly before I do anything else is boost the saturation of the stars go on to preview to be fair, most of these stars don't really have a lot of colour in them anyway, but there's some red ones up here. Just just boosting it slightly so they hopefully pop a bit when they uh, get added back in. So we've got these two, and we can just double click this and you can see the uh, 
a change to uh, the the way that I add stars uh, back in. I've done some experimentation. I've been thinking about doing a video specifically on this and and showing the effect of this either both with um, real images, but then also just with some some blobs and circles, so you can kind of um, attempt to see the impact of of different ways of using pixel math to uh, to bring things in. There's there's many different ways out there that um, people use, but um, this one does seem to be the most popular and actually. I think the best way of actually um, merging a starless and a um, stars image together whilst still retaining the correct colour of the stars. So just hit the square to apply uh, this pixel math script and it will generate a new and final image called final for you. So just open that up a bit more so you can see it. So that's our final processed image. I hope you found this useful. Let me know in the comments um, if you like the approach, you like the fact that you've um, got some icons just to get going with things like PixInsight. I just find it helpful that yeah, someone's sort of provided a workflow to, to help you with processing your images. Yeah, just let me know in the comments what you think. So I'll leave it at that. Uh, thank you very much for watching and clear skies.